This worksheet is going to be an introduction to alpha carbon chemistry, including defining the alpha carbon as well as alpha hydrogen, defining enols, and also enolates. The alpha carbon is a carbon atom that is bonded directly to a carbonyl group in an aldehyde or a ketone. So these carbon atoms right here would be alpha. This notation alpha is referring to a common non-IUPAC, non-systematic method of numbering the carbon chain. I use the term numbering, not literally. One option that we have for numbering the carbon chain is to use Greek letters, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, etc., and you start at the position directly adjacent to the carbonyl group. So instead of calling this carbon number one or carbon number alpha, we start numbering right here. And this particular carbon would essentially be, I guess, zero. So this is the alpha position in the carbon chain. It has two. And these, therefore, are the alpha carbons. Alpha hydrogens are hydrogens that are attached directly to alpha carbons. So this particular molecule here has two alpha carbons and it has a total of four alpha hydrogens. The first thing we're gonna do is go through the different molecules on this worksheet and just practice finding alpha carbons and alpha hydrogens. We're gonna start with this aldehyde right here. If we wanted to identify its alpha carbon, it only has one, it's right here, and its alpha hydrogen, are located right here. Don't be confused, this is not an alpha hydrogen. The alpha hydrogen have to be attached to an alpha carbon. This is a hydrogen that's directly attached to the carbonyl um, carbon. Let's go look for another. Here we have a ketone. This particular ketone has two alpha carbons and it has a total of six alpha hydrogen, three on each one of the carbon atoms. And uh, I think we have two more that we can work on. Here is another, this is also a ketone. It has two alpha carbons. It has a total of four alpha hydrogen. And then last but not least, one alpha carbon and two alpha hydrogen. The alpha hydrogens in these molecules are particularly reactive and they do some really interesting chemistry. One of the things that they do is just kind of pop right off the molecule and when this happens the molecule, either the aldehyde or the ketone, is converted into an intermediate, either an enolate or an enol. We're already familiar with the enol molecule. It's a molecule that is an alkene combined with an alcohol. We've seen this type of molecule before. We already know that the enol converts itself into a carbonyl compound like an aldehyde. We call that process tautomerization. Um, so since this is an equilibrium process, the aldehyde can convert itself into an enol. This process happens by removing one of the alpha hydrogens and shuffling some electrons around. We're going to look at the mechanism for that more closely. Another option that we have is to convert the aldehyde or ketone into what we call an enolate. Notice the relationship between the enol and the enolate. They're almost exactly the same. The enolate has a deprotonated um, alcohol group. So the enolate is much more reactive because it has that full negative charge on the oxygen atom and we'll also look at the mechanism for the formation of the enolate. We're going to start with the enol though because that one is a little bit more familiar to us. We can convert a carbonyl compound to an enol either by an acid or a base. Regardless of what we're using, the equilibrium, the process of, of forming the enol, is very weak equilibrium and it favors the carbonyl compound, meaning that when you do this type of reaction, and this is what we've already learned before, the majority, the, the large percentage of the molecule is going to remain unreactive as either an aldehyde or a ketone. Let's draw the curved arrows to show the formation of, of this, per, this particular enol. Um, so as you know, whenever you have an oxygen atom in the presence of an acid, the very first thing that would happen is protonation of that oxygen atom. And this is what we get right here. Here's our intermediate with the protonated oxygen. This has a resonance structure. We can move the lone pair of electrons up onto the oxygen atom. That delocalizes the positive charge from the oxygen uh, from the oxygen down on to the carbon atom. And then in the last step of this reaction, we'll use a water molecule to deprotonate 
uh, one of the alpha hydrogen and move those carbon hydrogen electrons in to form the carbon carbon double bond. And here is the, 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 the result, the enol. And again, as a reminder, not a whole lot of the product or not a whole lot of the molecule actually gets converted into this enol product. The majority of it stays as the ketone. This is because a carbon oxygen double bond is much more stable than a carbon carbon double bond. Now, in terms of the base catalyzed mechanism, this is also going to be forming an enol, the base catalyzed mechanism for the formation of the enol. In this situation, because we are not starting with an acid, we're starting with a base, so we don't begin by protonating the oxygen atom. We will begin by just going after one of those alpha carbon or alpha hydrogens. And we're going to start by just putting the carbon hydrogen electrons onto the alpha carbon as a lone pair. So that's going to give us this guy initially. The next thing that we're going to do is draw a resonance structure that shows those electrons coming in to form the carbon carbon double bond right here. And then our last step is to protonate that O minus which gives us the enol. And again, this is a weak equilibrium, so the majority of our product is going to stay as a ketone. And that is the, the conversion of an aldehyde or a ketone into an enol. Now let's talk next about converting into an enolate. If we want to convert into an enolate, we need to use a very strong base, such as LDA, lithium diisopropyl amine, or H minus, the hydride ion, such as LAH or NABH4. Enolates are preferred by chemists over enols because they are easier to form, because they are isolatable, they're not in equilibrium with the carbonyl compound, which means we just produce them, and they are more reactive because they have a full negative formal charge. So here we're going to propose a mechanism for the formation of the enolate using H-. This would come from LAH or maybe NABH4, one of those hydride reagents. In this, our hydride is going to attack um, an alpha hydrogen and move the electrons onto the alpha carbon. We'll have a lone pair of electrons right there and a negative charge. And then we'll also have a resonant structure where we delocalize that lone pair of electrons up onto the oxygen atom like this. Um, and this is, this is all that we have for this particular molecule, just these two resonance structures. Of these two resonance structures, we have one that has a negative formal charge on the carbon atom. We have one that has a negative formal charge on the oxygen atom. Using our trick ARIO, atom with the negative formal charge, we know that this version of the enolate is more stable because having a negative charge on an oxygen atom is more stable than having a negative charge on a carbon atom. Because this is the more stable form, it is the form that is less reactive. This form, which is less stable because the negative charge is on a carbon atom, is the more reactive form. And because this is the reactive version of the enolate, this is the form that it's in when it's undergoing chemical reactions, typically this is the only version of the enolate that chemists draw. For mechanism purposes, this is the form that we use when we're drawing a mechanism.